All right, so if you're watching this video, that means the class or you yourself like the first video enough or were interested enough after watching that first video to watch the second one. So the second one is gonna be me asking more family and friends and some of the same people about their careers or their schooling in uh, medical areas and human health services areas. So a lot of my aunts and uncles, they're nurses. Um, I have a lot of friends in like med school or who are somewhere medicine related. So uh, this is for you guys. Hope this helps again. And for everyone in this video, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, it was awesome talking to you guys and hopefully your advice is gonna be great for my students. And my aunts, uncles, and even my mom is in this video. So love you guys. Thank you so much and enjoy. All good? Yeah. We're good. Okay. Yeah. So can you please introduce yourself, what you guys do, and how you all know me, please? Okay. I'm, my name is Elaine. I'm Kevin's mom from Chicago. Uh, obviously related. I'm his mom. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's the last one again? The what you do? Oh, I'm a nurse. I started in Pete's. Uh, I go to cardiac daily and med, med search. Now I'm in GI for endo. Right. So just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Rithva, um, but I go by Rith a lot these days. And then what do I do? So I'm a current medical student. I'm a first year medical student at Albert Einstein College of Medicine, which is in New York City. Um, I know Mr. Diaz through like high school, we were in the same class. My name is Fran, anyway, uh, uh, I'm Kevin's aunt. Uh, his dad is my first cousin and her mom is our childhood uh, friend and a family friend. And I am a packing nurse, a recovery nurse. And uh, I know Kevin since, you know, he was small. Hi, I'm Stephen Fugelsang. Um, I am a pre-med student, um, recently graduated from Marquette University and in the middle of two gap years um, before I hopefully get into medical school. And I met Kevin my sophomore year. Um, he lived in the same building as me, was a couple floors below me. We were in the same friend group and we played video games together. I'm Gigi and Kevin's Aunt, the mother. Um, second mom. Second mom. Uh, I'm a dialysis nurse. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. Uh, my name is Francis. Uh, I'm a vocational nurse from a community health uh, center here uh, in Houston. And uh, uh, Kevin is uh, my uh, nephew. Um, so my name is Maddie Johnson, and I am currently a um, osteopathic medical student studying at Des Moines University in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, I'm also a dual degree, so that means that I'm also pursuing my master's in anatomy at the same time. And I think I'm finished with my requirements this summer, so I'm going to graduate um, in May with my master's and then two more years with my um, osteopathic degree. Uh, I'm Stephanie. I'm Kevin's uh, aunt. Uh, what I do, I'm also a nurse and I work with a patient that's going to surgery and I take care, uh, prepare them for surgeries and then I also take care of them after surgery and then I discharge them going home and I work with a veteran's uh, patient. Hi, my name is Elma. I know Kevin with this, uh, he's my nephew. Uh, I'm a unit coordinator nurse at uh, actually in Norfolk, but I live in Virginia Beach. Uh, did you always want to do this when you were growing up or no? No. No? How, how many no's? Raise your hand. How many no's? It's okay. Yes. How many yes? Me 50 50. So, so yeah. is there a hard yes, hard no, or like somewhere? Kind of like uh, along the way, I found it fulfilling. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Actually, I was forced by my mom to go to medicine. <laughs> yeah, I was actually uh, like uh, 
I was majoring in accounting, like almost in the third year. But I was forced to go to help my younger brother and sisters along the way. Financially, because you know, growing up in a third world country, some profession, they are really not treating you enough money to help your, if you have a larger family number, that you have to look for them too. But I think I only truly decided that this was for me in the early part of my undergrad career when I like shadowed a transplant surgery. Um, that was when I was like, whoa, this, this stuff is very cool. Me, uh, being the youngest in the family, there's only, uh, I have three siblings. We're all girls. Um, there's only me and my brother. And there's only two kind of courses in among the siblings, it's either accountancy or nursing. So since I am the youngest, I followed my elder sister, so I went to accountancy. And then after a year, I don't know, probably numbers is not really meant for me. So one day I cut classes and I just found myself sitting in the bench and, and I said, what do I really want to be for myself? And then I said, numbers is not really meant for me. So I to nursing and then I find it like you know very interesting and then when I had a job and I just you know realized that it's really my passion. So yeah I have been interested in medicine for a while and it started when I shadowed my cousin in eighth grade and she was in the emergency room as a um, and I just I remember falling in love with it and saying like the bloodier cases were the more fun ones and I just kind of fell in love with it right then and there. Um, tried other things in my high school career and college, but I always stuck with medicine, anatomy, and healthcare. I always wanted to do something with like biology. That's why I started out with the marine biology route. But yeah, I'm I'm happy where I ended up with medicine. So it's okay to get like when you are senior high school. And sometimes you get confused, so you know. Mhm. Mm Guide you. What was something that surprised you at like school or like clinicals when you like first started pursuing like pre-med and medicine? I think I think the biggest thing that surprised me was, and I hope this doesn't like shed a negative light on it, but like in college when you're studying medicine and stuff, you know, you're you're all trying to get into some competitive field and because of that um, the school environment can be kind of competitive so that was one of the things I was surprised about because I thought in a field where the entire you know purpose is to help others that everyone would be a little bit more collaborative but a lot of people are kind of just looking out for themselves and you know like they, they don't want to help you out with studying or testing, so finding good people that can help you out. And What was something that surprised you at your school slash job when you first started? So with medicine, I guess what's really shocking is how different you're treated when you become a medical student versus an undergrad. In undergrad, you're like fighting to get into medicine, and that's what makes it super competitive. And once you get into medical school, like the whole system, instead of fighting against the system or like proving your worth or whatever, in undergrad or in medical school, you're fighting like the system fights for you. And like the school and all the resources that we have are meant to push you wherever you want to go. The one that really surprised me is that you're thinking like you're helping a patient as sickly, but um, being there, like they're um, they're sick, but you're dealing not only to the patient, you're dealing with the family as well. Mm. Especially me, I started with uh, kids, like a uh, younger generation. You need you take care not only the baby, so as the parents and even the grandparents. There is more on the the dynamic is the family. On the patient itself. Okay. And that's really make a big impact. People are in the same boat as you, and 
no one wants to miss out on their 20s as they sometimes say so you don't have to you can find a good balance in with it and that's something that I found surprising was that you can find a good balance it is still hard sometimes um you definitely have to like put other things above or put medicine above other things um, but finding that balance is so important and me for me working with the veterans it is really very you know rewarding because these are the people who serve our country and you know I mean right now sometimes we have very young they're in the 30s but they have paralysis or no sensation in their legs because you, you know during the they were in the war injury and also um, sometimes they are they have no legs a very so it's very you know it's sad I'm very sad for them but these are the people who give up their life for our country On like the opposite end, what was something you found like really cool or interesting about medical school? One of the things I found really interesting was, and this is kind of like unique to the school that we went to, was especially like their cadaver lab because yeah, Marquette offers a cadaver lab course, you know, in your sophomore year. A lot of schools don't let you work with cadavers until you're in grad school or something or medical school already. Um, but Marquette lets you do it as early as sophomore year. And that's really cool because it's not an experience you really get inside of a normal classroom. It's not something you can learn from a lecture. Like you're, you're very hands-on and you're seeing things, you know, right in front of you you're not just looking at a screen and studying the material so that was one of the things that was like a very pleasant surprise for me something cool or interesting i guess like one really cool thing about medicine is that it's a lot more diverse of a field than people might think like doctors are needed in every single like field in some sort of way if you want to do like join in on like health tech so I have a colleague on here like in my class where after graduating he wants to just go work for a company and like not even practice medicine he just wants to use his MD as like a certification and work for like health tech um which like earns a lot of money and like is a pretty cool field so he's doing that me personally in undergrad I was also like taking a lot of law classes and I really liked law so my first semester of medical school, I worked with a law firm writing medical affidavit, affidavits for asylum seekers. So that's something that they can use in court to like increase their chances of getting asylum. So I guess it was like the stuff that I'm involved in isn't just like, oh, I'm going to a hospital and working there or even like saving lives in a generic sense or like in a medical sense where you're just literally doing that. Um, having the credentials of medicine lets you do a lot of things. Uh, I was from an uh, uh, engineering background and then when I transferred, uh, when I transitioned to a nurse, nursing uh, profession, I was also in my name and I don't know what to do. But I know the, I have this, the education about the skills, but the thing is, it's not about the skills. It's how you, you're in um, interpersonal approach. It's not really the ma what matters most is the personal approach. Uh, the skills will just come along. I found it really cool that um, there was no one track to medicine. So if you get to applying to medical school, you'll know like a lot of places say they have very similar things and it's hard to kind of like parse out what's different between them. Um, but just kind of like everyone's backgrounds and hearing how, you know, people took gap years or people didn't or people had whole careers before they came in. Do you have any advice for anyone, especially them, going into like medicine, nursing, or any of those fields? Oh, I think number one that I always hear from my kids is you need to be happy. Okay? So if this career is um, like what we said we are all rewarding. So you need to really like you have to or must like serve or uh, helping people because in this career, any profession, doctors, PA, nursing assistant, you need to have compassion. 
they are just not numbers that you need to see 10 patients a day or 20. They have feelings. They need respect. Not only the pain that you are coming for a day, but you need to go home and say, oh my God, I made you know that patient very you know happy or I was able to serve them the way they deserve. So please, I mean, you have to sometimes, you have to think, is this really why I, what I want to do in the medical field? Because it's, um, it's not only uh, one aspect, you have a total, when you take care of a patient, you see them like a, like what your like a family member that what you want them to do to others, you know, it's the same you do it to what you want others to do to, to yourself is what you do to them. So I would say like if you're choosing the medical field, make sure it's because one, you like biology and like you know, the biological sciences and then two that you do like want to focus on like the impact that you make on the health of like a community or a person because like I've met some people in medical school right now that are really regretting going this far because once you get into medical school like yeah you can leave but like you know what I mean you put so much time and effort um I would just make sure that that's something that you're really really interested in um so try to shadow people try to talk to other people try to look up stuff if you don't have any connections that way um because you're not going to know until you're in it and there are some dark days in medical school where you're just you know inside studying all the time um or even like if you're going to become a nurse or a pt pa stuff like that there's going to be some some harder days and you just want to make sure that it's really right for you so again don't be afraid to take those different experiences try to figure it out um because the goal is where we're trying to get so um even if it's a little rough in the beginning just know if, like if you're sure that you want to do this career in health care then you'll be good you just got to get through those some rough years so i can't talk about emt training if that helps like a lot of a lot emt training is something that like a lot of undergrads do when they're trying to get into medical school um because it looks really good basically it's just like one course that you take and then you get certified and then you can work in an ambulance and i do know people that did that and um, it seems super rewarding. You learn a lot of life skills that you can use in different places, like an airplane or something. But um, working in an ambulance is very rough. Like the shifts there are like nine hour shifts and not a lot, not all of them are in like a normal nine hours. It could be like from 10 p.m. to like whatever nine hours after that is. So um, that's just something to keep in mind that a lot of people did it during the summer or during a gap year more than um, during a school year because it does interfere with school. But you can get your training during the school year, I would say. It's it's tough stuff. It's not easy. So, you know, keep your head up. Um, a lot of, a lot of like the jobs that you might work or other opportunities that you might do while you're trying to get into med school or nursing school or anything like that. Um, they're, they might not be the most glorious things, you know, it's kind of like you're at the bottom of the totem pole in medicine, so you're doing stuff that you don't want to do for the rest of your life, but you, know, you just keep your head up, keep working, some things will make you question whether or not you want to keep doing it, or if you would be good at doing it, but just stick to your guns and yeah, keep going. Um, a lot of the advice that you would get are from like the current practicing physicians, but medical school was very different for them versus what the culture is right now. Everything is super, super competitive these days and it's getting more competitive. So I guess like one advice I would give is that people, you might hear from like older physicians that like you don't really need to do much, just like do well in school and then you're good. But these days, like doing stuff outside of school is like the most essential thing. So um, when you go to college, like I would say your first year, you can just focus on school, like focus on trying to get like everything going, I guess. You can join clubs as like a general member and then just like figure out what you want to do. And then then you want to start looking for research. Um, you want to start volunteering both in a hospital and or like in a clinical situation and outside of one. So I worked at like free clinics and then I also did like the soup kitchen. So it was like 
both of those are kind of necessary. And then um, obviously you do want to do well in school. So I guess there's that. And another advice I have for college is you might hear the opposite side of what I just told you, where instead of like being chill with it, like you guys have to like spend 90% of your time just doing work. But I don't think that's how it is. Like you can definitely have a lot of fun in college and get like everything you need. So I would make sure to not lean in either like end of the spectrum and to find like a good middle place where you're still having fun because you only go through college once and you're at the same time you're also doing the things you need to get into like medical school if that's what you guys want to do. For those who are going to be like coming into any um, medical field, I think you have to be open-minded. It's always a challenge. Every day, even I'm, I've been a nurse since I don't know when, but every day is when you will always uh, encounter something new. And it's always good to ask questions. This advice is mainly once you figured out that this is for you. Do you have any good stories or good memories with me? Um, Kevin is um, a good kid or baby ever since. Um, the only the only thing that misses him a lot when we started here, uh, of course, financially we're not as uh, stable. But even how uh, precious the gift you give to this kid, to him, uh, the only thing that it pleases him is anything with a ball. Oh, it's the basketball or the bouncing ball from the bouncing ball. If he goes back, whatever new toy he got, he goes back to the ball. He had a speech impediment when he was growing up, and then I used to take uh, him to his speech therapist. And our routine after his speech therapist, we always go to Kentucky French. He will always get, what was that? The chicken. Pot pie? Ah, uh, yeah. No, not the pot pie. pie. The, the popcorn chicken. Popcorn chicken. <laughs> yeah. That's our routine. The meaning. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for all of your time. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> you guys are so sad. It's so wrong. Oh, it's wrong. This <laughs> 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 isn't supposed to be so serious. It's so serious. I don't know. Why not? I'm serious. I'm making you guys work. Yeah. We're supposed to go somewhere like uh, Oh, so, so you don't want to do this? Yeah. No, because I mean, it's for free. It's not over time. <laughs>